Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be bringing you my final looks video in my one look per pan series really that I have been doing for just a very short time here on this channel. I'm going to be showing you looks six, seven, and eight. I'm going to stop it there. I'm not going to do a ninth look. I think I talked about that a little bit in my very first video. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all of the looks that I created, including this one, and then we'll come back for some of my thoughts here at the end. All right, everybody. So we're starting off the day with technical difficulties. Luckily, I realized that I wasn't filming before I got too far into it and just literally had to start all, all over. So I apologize. Let me go ahead and catch you up to where we are. All I've done to this point is I've applied my SPF. I have also gone ahead and primed my lids using my MAC Painterly Paint Pot. And then I set it down with a cream uh, matte shadow, just like I always would. Uh, the only thing that you've missed from this beauty right here is that I did take this baby pink shade right here and I just very quickly and messily ran that through my crease. Nothing too, nothing too earth shattering or groundbreaking. We're just using it as a transition shade and I haven't used it yet. So this is actually, this is the last shadow in this little pa palette. That I hadn't used yet so that in and of itself for me is actually pretty exciting for some people that's you know whatever but for me that's kind of a big deal okay and I think I want to do just sort of um, a one shadow type of look well I guess technically two shadows since we've already put that pink in but I'm gonna take this deeper sort of metallic purpley plum shade and I'm going to take that and I'm just going to put it all the way on my lids, all the way across, but I'm going to blend it out and kind of share it out a little bit and just see how deep and dark I want to make it and how much blending we need to do. But I really like this color. It's almost like a blackened plum, but I want to take it just all along my lid. And it's not doing a great job with just a fluffy brush. So let's see. We may need to pack a little bit on and then blend that out. I just didn't want it to get too dark too quickly. And so that's why I was using the fluffy brush. Maybe it'll work. It'll just it'll take some time and energy. So I will probably speed through this a little bit because I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit boring. That's getting a little all over the place. We're going to have to do some major cleanup here. Okay, I'm looking a little beaten at the moment. Um, so we're going to do because it is kind of patchy through my crease a little bit. So I am going to go back in with that matte pink shade and I'm going to try to blend this out just a little bit, kind of soften it up. And then we're going to do some serious cleanup. We're going to do some cleanup, then we're going to come back and we're going to do some more with the eyes because it's looking a little nuts right now. Okay, so I'm back with the fallout cleaned up. I also cleaned up. There was a lot that collected in the inner corner. I cleaned that up as much as I could and I'm looking a lot less crazy. I did go ahead and apply my foundation, concealer, and powder, but that's all. So I'm going to continue to smoke this out so I do have just a little pencil brush. 
And again, I'm going to go into that purple shade and I'm going to take that all the way across the lash line. We're going to see if I can do this without it going too, too crazy. And just sort of connecting it up a little bit. That's good and defined, but I do want to smoke it out a little bit. So let's find a little bit smaller fluffy brush. Hmm, I think this might work. So it's got kind of a point to it. This is a Morphe M330. And I am going to go back into that pink shade that we put all through the crease. And I'm going to use that to try to blow out the lower lash line just a little bit. Seems like it's cleaning it up, but not smoking it out. So that's good to know, but it's not quite the effect I was going for. So I may need to layer back on a little bit of that purple. And we'll drag this pink shade down just a little bit further than I normally would, I think. Okay, so yes, definitely going to add in just a little bit more of that purple on my pencil brush, focusing mostly on the outer third. I'm worried that this pink makes me look a little bit sickly and we want to not do that. That sickly is never the look that you're going for, right? So, starting to get really, really annoyed with this camera because yes, yes it did stop filming again. So, I don't know where that happened or when that happened. So, in case you missed it, all I did was I took this shade right here and I patted that right over the top of my entire lid with just my fingertip just to kind of bring some dimensionality to the look because it has that kind of duochrome glitteriness to it so that when you turn the light catches just a little bit different and I love the effect that it has. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this gold shade and I'm going to use that to highlight my brow bone and my inner corner. I'll probably go a little bit heavy in my inner corner because I feel like it does still have a little bit of that plum that I couldn't quite clean out and I want to make sure to bring that lightness and brightness back to my inner corner. I'm really, really liking this. It's nice and dark and smoky without being too, too heavy. And I enjoy that a lot. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply mascara, do the rest of my face makeup, put on some lips, and we'll come back for the final look. All right, everybody, so here we have the finished look, and I have to say I'm really, really pleased with the way that it came out. I really like the way that deep purple shadow buffed out. Yes, it was super messy, so if you're going to do that, um, I would definitely recommend not doing your face makeup first because it did require a lot of cleanup, but 
I think it turned out really, really beautifully. And by tapping that other eyeshadow over the top to give it that complexity, I think was just an absolute perfect addition. So I hope that you have enjoyed this look and I'm excited to bring you the next one. All right, so for the next look that I am doing out of my MAC Aladdin palette is I think I wanna do another cut crease. So I will start by putting, you know, let's go with this pink shade. We'll put that all through the crease. And then I'm gonna go in dark and heavy in the crease with this purple shade right here. And then I think I wanna use gold on the actual lid itself. So let's see how that ends up turning out. The purple shade I do like quite a bit, but it is difficult to pick up on the brush as I saw in my last look. So I'm hoping that this will turn out okay. As usual, I have already gone ahead and primed my lids. I used my MAC Painterly Paint Pot and then just set it down with a cream colored eyeshadow just to get rid of the stickiness I usually leave the lid itself without being set down. I don't know if that really makes a difference, but it makes me feel like it's making a difference. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with this denser, fluffy brush that has a little bit of a taper to it that's the soft domed brush from Makeup Geek and I'm just going to start packing it all the way in. I'm probably going to take it onto the outer third or half of the lid as well. Oh yeah, no, that is not. Oh, that's a mess. That was the wrong brush to use. We're just going to continue on with the, the Luxie brush that I was using before. This is the 205 and we're going to try that instead. No. This purple is just very, very crumbly. <sighs> Oof. We're going to need a lot of cleanup here, folks. A lot of cleanup. All right. Let's give the other side a bit of a try as well. I feel like I have to use the same brush on the other side just to kind of replicate the disaster <laughs> that started on the other lid. Oh, this is just skippy and patchy and not at all what I envisioned, to be quite honest. But we will persevere. Wow, that's sure is something. Okay, so we'll fix it. We'll fix it. I'm going to get another fluffy brush because I want to take some more of that pink and try to blend out <laughs> what's going on here. I mean, look at all that fallout. That's crazy. Okay, that pink is helping to fix it a little bit. Soften it up a little bit. Okay, feeling a little bit better. All right. Just back and forth because I do want that purple intensity. I just don't want it all over the place, you know what I mean?
Okay. Okay. All right, because this is so super distracting, I am gonna take a makeup wipe and clean up, and then we'll come back and start doing the uh, rest of it. Okay, that looks substantially better. <laughs> it was kind of just flipping me out, having all that fallout all over my face. So now I'm gonna take just my concealer. This is still the Milani Conceal and Perfect that I've been using, and I'm gonna use that to cut the crease. Probably just do like a half cut crease, I think, like I did before. Okay, and then using my finger, I'm going to go in with this nice gold right here, and I'm just going to pat that all over where I put down the concealer. How's it that you always have one eye that just automatically looks better than the other? <laughs> okay, I think that is an intensity that I'm happy with. I am going to go back with this brush though, not in the crease, but I am going to use it just to kind of blend, <laughs> attempt to blend the outer edge of the gold with the purple. Especially on this side, there's just a much harsher line. I want it to look more cohesive. And of course, more fallout. Okay, but on the whole, I think that that looks good. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to clean up the additional fallout. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply all my face makeup and all that kind of great stuff. Come back and we'll finish off the eye look. All right, we are back and I have the rest of my face put on. So now we're just going to go ahead and finish up the lower lash line. So I am going to go into that purple shade and I'm just going to run that along the outer third of the lash line and then we'll go in with the pink and we'll blend that out. Okay, doesn't take much with that shade. <laughs> All right, and then with just a fluffy kind of tapered brush, we're going to go into that pink and blend out this purple somewhat. All right, that I can live with. And then finally using this kind of brush right here, we're going to take the lightest gold here in the top and I'm going to use that for my inner corner and my brow bone.
All right, all we need now is a bunch of mascara and I'll be back for the final look. All right, my friends, here we have the final look, mascara, face, the whole shebang. And I do like it. I really do like the contrast of the gold and the purple. So I think this came out well, and I'm excited to bring you the next look in this series. All right, my friends, so we are back for the final look in this series. Again, we are using the MAC Aladdin 9 Pan Palette. I think for today's look, we are going to start with that pink all through the crease again. And then I think I might try to work the black into the crease somewhat as well, and then top everything off with this silver. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm thinking that rather than trying to put it into this video, because I feel like the last video that I did for this with uh, looks 3, 4, and 5 just turned out to be really long. I think that was like a 30 minute video. And that's a little bit longer than I think most people would prefer to watch. Let me know in the comments below though if you feel like 30 minutes is okay or if it should be tighter. I feel like I edited the absolute daylights out of that video and it was still a half an hour. So I do want to try to get it down to being a little bit better. We'll see once I put all three of these looks together how long it turns out to be. But I feel like if it's anything like that video, I don't want to put all of my thoughts and my actual review of this palette in that video, but I think I'll do a separate one. Let me know what you think, if that's something that works for you or not. So I am gonna go ahead and take the black on a fluffy but tapered and smaller brush and see if I can't work that through the crease. I think this is just going to be a bit of a dramatic look today because I wanted to kind of go out with a bang. And I just, I don't know, I kind of feel about this shadow the way that I did about the purple that we used in look number seven. And I just don't love the way that it blends through the crease. I don't know, I'm having thoughts about this palette and I am actually really looking forward to sharing them. And if you have this palette or any of Mac's other nine pen palettes that are released in this format usually for themes like this. I think that's probably the best description because it's not exactly a collab I don't feel like because it's not as though you know Disney worked with them on this or or any of the actors or anything like that since this was released um, in, I guess, celebration of the live action movie that was just recently released. So, this is the first MAC eyeshadow palette that I've ever used or ever had. I do have one or two singles that were gifted to me by a friend who is decluttering them. And one of them's just an actual white shade that I only have ever used to set down my eyeshadow base because that's for me what I use that for. But I've never really used MAC shadows before so I don't know what is normal and what's standard and what isn't but I have thoughts and we'll leave it at that. So I, I am thinking that I'm going to do a full review of this palette and kind of my experiences using it. I'm just again going back into that pink shade trying to blend out a little bit of the just patchiness of this black shade because it I don't even know if patchy is actually the right word but it like skips there are all those little lines through the crease and I do set down my eyeshadow base with a matte shadow so I can't even imagine what it would be actually like sticking on I don't know and if you noticed I did take a little bit onto the outer um, third of my lid as well. I will say that because this is not a terribly saturated black, I do kind of like the color that it's 
fading out to be. I don't know. It's almost like a grazy purple or something. I'm sure adding the pink on top is helping with that, but... And I'm sorry if the lighting's kind of going in and out. As usual, it's storming in the Carolinas. Okay, I think that is about as good as that's going to get for the moment. And then that silver shade, as I've been doing lately, I'm just going to take it on my fingertip. I'm not going to worry about trying to cut my crease the way that I did before. kind of want to just keep it easy. I don't want to have to go through the whole rigmarole just to do my eye makeup, you know what I mean? Hopefully I'm not completely blocking my face, so sorry. Okay, and then I'm going to go back with the original brush that we're using in that black shade, and I'm just going to re-intensify the outer corners. Try to blend those two together as much as I can. I'm going to go ahead and clean up all of the mess, put on some face makeup, and then we'll come back and we'll finish off the eye look. Alrighty, so we are back with the rest of my face done, and we are just going to finish everything off. Going in very similarly, we're going to go ahead and use the black in the outer third, and then make sure to blend it all out with the pink. Nothing too revolutionary going on here. I do want to say, though, that I actually rather like the way that the black blends out to almost a purple when you combine it with that pink. It really does a very nice job of softening everything up so that it's not so harsh, which is a surprise. I, I was not expecting that at all. All right, I like that. I think that looks really, really nice. All that's left now is some mascara, and then we'll come back for the final, final look. All right, my friends, so here we have it. This is the final look, and I'm so surprised by how much I like this look. Why is it that the last look is always my favorite when I'm doing these videos? I think it actually turned out just so soft and so romantic. I'm just floored. I'm just floored by how much I enjoy this look and I can tell you right now it is a look that I will do again because I think it is just so feminine and pretty and I just really really like it. So yeah that is the last look that I will be doing with this Aladdin palette. All right, so those are all of the looks that I have created using this palette, and I'm really curious to see which one you liked the best. I know I have my thoughts, but I'm curious what yours are. I think also that I'm going to go ahead and do, and I know I mentioned this while I was applying this look, but I am going to go ahead and do a dedicated review video for this palette here and give you just really a very comprehensive view of my thoughts and feelings on it. I hope that you have enjoyed this series and I am really excited to do the next one. I'm thinking of a couple of different 
palettes that I may want to do this style of video with. And honestly, I know I said that I would put up a poll, but I do have some single eyeshadows coming that I'm so, so excited to be breaking into. I actually made an order through the um, Lethal Cosmetics website. And you guys, I'm so excited for it that I'm actually thinking that that is going to be my next one pan per palette series video segment set episode. I don't know how I'm going to call these, but that I think is going to be the next one. So if you have enjoyed this video, I hope you'll go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you are new, I hope that you'll consider subscribing before you leave. I hope that you're having an amazing day and I will see you next time. Bye.